Sup, you beautiful bastards. Hope you have a fantastic Tuesday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first things we're gonna jump into, it's actually two big pieces of YouTube slash entertainment news. They've been heavily requested, and they both revolve around Logan Paul. And the first part is around YouTube reaction, punishment, and monetization, and it was actually announced yesterday just after show. Logan Paul, if you don't remember, is one of the most massive creators on the YouTube platform. There's massive controversy and outrage against him after he featured a dead body in his video and thumbnail. Then he went through that whole redemption tour that we talked about. He took time off. They made a video talking about suicide in a, in, a, in a meaningful manner. He did a fluff piece interview with Good Morning America, and then he was back to making videos, and immediately he started bragging about how many subscribers he gained while he was not posting videos. One of the first videos he had back, he, he was tasing dead animals. And then in response to this, on top of YouTube's initial reactions of suspending his YouTube Red series, of removing him from Google Preferred Advertising, he ended up removing all his monetization, and then even announced other ways that they would punish creators like this in the future. This including the previously mentioned mentioned removal of monetization, as well as making sure that person's videos don't pop up in recommended, trending, or even on the front page. So the news we're getting today is that YouTube is now bringing Logan Paul back into the YouTube monetization program. At this time, he's still not in Google preferred ads, but he does have ads. And so what that ultimately equated to is YouTube doing a two week suspension of his monetization. Now moving forward, when other creators do something like this is two weeks of standard, not sure yet. YouTube also reportedly saying that while they have brought back monetization, Logan Paul is still on probation. And during this 90 day probation period, reportedly. His videos are not eligible to appear in the trending category. Also, his videos won't be sent to non-subscribers and notifications of recent videos uploaded to the site. And so regarding this part of the story, that's where we are now. And the second reason Logan Paul's in the news is if everything we're seeing online right now is true and everything continues to move forward, we may this year see one of the biggest events in YouTube history. In the past month, we talked about the massive success that was the live event and boxing match between KSI and Joe Weller. It was live streamed to an audience that had a concurrent number of viewers at an around 1.6 million number. It's now amassed over 20 million views uh, without even considering uh, advertising, YouTube revenue, merchandise. At least $700,000 was most likely brought in just from ticket sales. It's been reported an average of $92 was spent on each ticket and there were around 8,000 people watching. And if you're one of the 8,000 that were in attendance or the millions that watched it online, you know that after KSI won the fight, he challenged Logan and or Jake Paul. This then resulted in a lot of drama videos, people calling other people out, saying, they want to fight, and then on February 24th, Logan Paul said, yes, I will fight him, and then he mentioned some stuff about location, headgear. Yes. It looks like I am fighting KSI. And this is interesting for two reasons. One, because like I said, if this actually does happen, this will most likely be one of the largest live streamed events in YouTube history. And two, it will be very interesting to see how YouTube reacts to this. As you might remember, Casey Neistat recently interviewed Robert Kinsel. And in that video, you might remember Robert Kinsel said, we're thinking very deeply in every single day on how do we create the right incentives and disincentives for creators to do the right thing on YouTube. That means a lot of different things. Going on to say, not chase sensationalism, not chase views for the sake of views, and not chase drama for the sake of use. But if you've even remotely followed the back and forth that has led to this moment of maybe this fight will happen, it's a lot of drama. But also it's important to point out that drama is not a uniquely YouTube thing, especially regarding promotion. You'll see it in the music industry. You'll also specifically see it around boxing or the UFC. I mean, when you look at the success of Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather, it's because they're fantastic shit talkers on top of being very good fighters. So the question becomes, what is YouTube's reaction going to be? We have Kinsel making this statement and it's not a unique statement if you talk to someone from YouTube. So the question becomes, do they crack down what is essentially a promotional tool we've seen elsewhere, but then they're, they're treating YouTubers different because they, this is their main home? Or do they do nothing and they allow it to happen and potentially people criticize them for not backing their claim? Or do they outright embrace and support the event because it could be huge for YouTube? And also understand me talking about this, I'm not calling for a crackdown here. Real drama, fake drama, that's a completely separate situation to showing dead bodies in thumbnails and videos, tasing dead animals. Right, while all those situations involve Logan Paul, it is important to separate those things. And personally, I would love to see this event actually happen because if it is done incredibly well, I think it is a major step forward for the platform. That for live events to be big and meaningful and profitable, it has to in involve some mainstream element that, that it can actually be homegrown talent doing it. The first one was his massive success. I feel like it set the stage. This could be five to 10 times bigger. But that is my personal opinion and I pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts on this? You wanna see it happen, yes or no? Does this go against Robert Kinsel's point of drama and sensationalism for views? 
Is YouTube going to do anything? Would you want them to actually do anything? Let me know what you're thinking and why in those comments down below. But from that, I want to share some stuff I love today and today in awesome brought to you by Postmates. Postmates, of course, fantastic delivery on demand app. You want something from the store, a restaurant, open the app, or it, boom, they'll deliver it to your home, your workplace, your wherever. I mainly use it and love it because of the convenience that it saves me so much time. But you can also be safe, like if you're at a party, you want to get more drinks, you maybe you've had a few, you don't want to go out. We've got a dedicated section just for drinks. If you want to try it out, you're a new customer, go to postafranco.com, download it, use code PhillyD in the app, and they will give you $100 in free delivery credit. And for the first bit of awesome, we got a video from Industrial Light and Magic, taking a closer look at the motion capture performance by Andy Serkis in The Last Jedi, showing how they created Supreme Leader Snoke. Then from the creator of Rack, we got a trailer for Veronica. It also just dropped on Netflix yesterday, so you can watch it today after the show. Then we got the Honest Game trailer for Fortnite. Side note, if you want to play with me on my Xbox Live handle, is Philly DeFranco. Also, if you ever see me on Rocket League, yes, that is really me, unless you beat me in Rocket League, in which case that was definitely someone else. Then we got a video from Thrillist for their series $30 Dinner Party. It shows some pulled pork goodness with a twist. And if you want to see the full versions of everything, I just shared the secret link of the day, anything at all. Links is always are in the description down below. And then I want to talk about a story that a lot of news sites covered last week, but I feel like in a very, very misleading way. Last week, you might have seen a version of this headline. CNN Tech says Snapchat stock loses $1.3 billion after Kylie Jenner tweet. Reuters Tech News tweeting, update Snap loses about $1.5 billion in market value following Kylie Jenner's tweet on Snapchat redesign. The Verge writing, Snap stock plummets after Kylie Jenner declares Snapchat dead. Although I will give The Verge a little bit of a pass because unlike CNN, they at least wrote, while this may just be an odd case of correlation, her declaring she's done with the app could have ripple effects throughout the user base. And the rest of the article seems to go back and forth as far as if there is blame. But if you look at the full situation, it looks like a lot of news outlets are, are just giving far too much credit to Kylie Jenner. Yes, last Wednesday, one of Snapchat's most popular users, Kylie Jenner, criticized the platform's latest redesign, tweeting, so does anyone else not open Snapchat anymore? Or is it just me? Ugh, this is so sad. And later she followed that with, still love you though, Snap, my first love. And at the end of the day, we saw Snapchat stock drop around 6%, which is a loss of an estimated $1.3 billion in market value. And yes, while Kylie Jenner does have millions of Twitter followers, if, if you actually look at the whole situation, she doesn't seem to be the exact reason for the decline. One, shares had already reportedly begun to slide before Kylie's tweet. This, following the news that CEO Evan Spiegel sold $50 million worth of share, around 1% of his holding. It was his first share sale since Snap went public, so the market seemed to react to that. Also, just in general, Snapchat has been under fire since their latest redesign. Many users hating it and being very vocal about it. And we've seen people for weeks saying the new changes make the app more confusing, difficult to use. Users have been so against it. They've hated it so much, they started a change.org petition that has been signed over one million times asking Snapchat to remove the update. Aside from the actual users, Wall Street also hasn't been impressed with Snapchat. I say that because we saw analysts at Citigroup downgrade Snapchat's stock from neutral to sell in a note to investors the day before Kylie's tweet. The analysts Mark May and Ho Yan writing, while the recent redesign of Snap's flagship app could produce positive long-term benefits, there is a significant jump in negative app reviews since the redesign was pushed out a few weeks ago, which could result in a decline in users and user engagement and could negatively impact financial results. Also including a graph showing the massive jump of one-star reviews with February being their worst month yet. Also the day after Kylie's tweet where we saw a very significant drop, it was also the same day the company released its 10K. That is its annual report with the Securities and Exchange Commission. And in that document, Snap shared the many risks it faces as a business. That including its reliance on Google's cloud infrastructure, the ongoing competition from larger companies like Facebook, and the fact that it lacks a central headquarters. And so all of those factors I've mentioned are very likely the reason we saw the stock drop. Also, according to numbers from SimilarWeb, it looks like Kylie's tweet also didn't negatively impact usage. A spokesperson for Similar Web saying, our findings revealed that the brand's engagement metrics were virtually untouched. Not only has the brand maintained a current install rate of 25% on all US Android devices, downloads actually increased from 348,716 on February 21st to 352,727 on February 22nd. And the daily active app users actually rose from 32% to 33% during this time. And so this is just something I wanna hit on. I, I get that the headlines sound fantastic, like Kylie Jenner just ruined a company with a tweet. But sometimes, and I, I would almost argue often, that there's a lot more to the story. But that said, I do want to pass the question off to you. Do you use Snapchat? I personally just use Instagram. Link down below, Philly DeFranco. I post photos of my stupid face along with my wife and or children. Also, sometimes I go on little Insta story rants, but I keep that shit under 40 seconds because no one cares that much on Instagram. Why you got over 30 Insta stories in a day when 25 of them are you from the same location? 
Just make a YouTube video. Anyway, I'm getting off track. This is the end of this story. And then let's talk about two updates around the boycott NRA situation we talked about yesterday. If you haven't seen it yet, there have been people saying they're gonna boycott companies that have partnerships with the NRA. Since then, we saw brands like Best Western, United Airlines, Delta Airlines, Enterprise, Rent-A-Car, MetLife, many others ending their partnerships with the NRA. And one of the companies we talked about yesterday that was getting a lot of pressure but had not commented yet was FedEx. FedEx reportedly offers a discount for NRA Business Alliance members, which gives a 26% discount. And yesterday, seemingly moments after I was done filming the show, FedEx responded, saying FedEx Corporation's positions on the issues of gun policy and safety differ from those of the National Rifle Association. FedEx opposes assault rifles being in the hands of civilians. While we strongly support the constitutional right of U.S. citizens to own firearms subject to appropriate background check, FedEx views assault rifles and large capacity magazines as an inherent potential danger to schools, workplaces, and communities when such weapons are misused. We therefore support restricting them to the military. Most important, FedEx believes urgent action is required at the local, state, and federal level to protect schools and students from incidents such as the horrific tragedy in Florida on February 14th. But then adding, FedEx is a common carrier under federal law and therefore does not and will not deny service or discriminate against any legal entity regardless of their policy positions or political views. The NRA is one of hundreds of organizations in our alliances slash association marketing program whose members receive discounted rates for FedEx shipping. FedEx has never set or changed rates for any of our millions of customers around the world in response to their politics, beliefs, or positions on issues. And of course, as expected, there was a split reaction to this. There were those who were very happy saying they will use FedEx that they're happy that they're not bowing to public pressure. And then you had people that were angry and disappointed and saying they will continue to boycott FedEx. And of course, like with the rest of the, the boycotts and the people doubling down on their support of companies, we'll see what the long-term effects are. So we had that update to the FedEx situation, but then I wanted to talk about the seemingly far more concerning Delta Airlines Georgia situation. So as I mentioned earlier, Delta Airlines was one of the companies that announced they are ending their relationship, their partnership with the NRA. In a statement they said, Delta's decision reflects the airline's neutral status in the current national debate over gun control amid recent school shootings. Out of respect for our customers and employees on both sides, Delta has taken this action to refrain from entering this debate and focus on its business. Delta continues to support the Second Amendment. They then go on to mention that they also stopped supporting the Shakespeare in the Park play after the backlash for making Julius Caesar look like Trump. And if you don't remember that story, we actually covered it on the show. I'll link to it down below. Now, what it looks like to me from Delta's original statement is that they're, they're like, we don't want to be a part of this conversation. This isn't going to end well for us. Uh, we're, we're just going to end the partnership. We're, we have no ties to anyone. We're neutral. Please, no one get angry at us. But of of course, there, there were going to be people that supported the NRA and Republicans who got angry at Delta because it, it's not a neutral move, it's the removal of a partnership. Right? Like if you give someone $5 and then someone's like, no, why'd you give that guy $5? He's an asshole. And so you're like, actually, I'll, I'll take that $5 back. That's not a that's not a neutral move. You, you made a decision. Now what I didn't expect is for this situation to escalate to the level it did. Because of this situation, Delta ending their partnership, we now have Republican politicians in the state of Georgia saying they will not vote for the tax break that Delta was going to get. And that bill was reportedly set to give a $50 million sales tax exemption on jet fuel, which primarily would benefit Delta, who is based in Atlanta. The bill had just passed the House, had moved to the Senate, and then we saw Georgia's Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle tweet, I will kill any tax legislation that benefits Delta unless the company changes its position and fully reinstates its relationship with the NRA. Corporations cannot attack conservatives and expect us not to fight back. We all saw other Republicans in the state agreeing with Cagle's statement. Chuck Huffstetler, chairman of Georgia's Senate Finance Committee, saying, We felt that it was wrong for them to single out one company adding that he hopes Delta will reverse their decision, otherwise a tax break will be stripped from the bill. State Senator Michael Williams saying, when Delta came out and pretty much dumped on all the NRA members, it invigorated a lot of our base, adding, we're going to fight. And it appears very likely that Delta will be screwed here because in Georgia's Senate, the Republicans hold a majority of 37 to 19. And I will say this general reaction to me is concerning, but I am also split. Part of me looks at this and goes, well, it's incredibly concerning that we have government officials threatening an American company for not wanting to provide a benefit to a nonprofit anymore. This because the American company made a political statement they did not like. I feel the ethics around that are questionable and it feels very anti-free market, which I believe many Republicans support. But then the other part of my brain goes, well, the Senate Republicans are essentially doing unto Delta what Delta did to the NRA. Obviously, Delta said they were trying to be neutral with this move while Cagle was very on the offensive. But ultimately, what these Senate Republicans are talking about is the removal of a potential benefit. And as politicians, they are representatives of the people. So if they feel like the people that support them want this move, they don't want to benefit Delta because they feel attacked. Isn't that kind of part of the people deciding that they don't want this tax break to go to a company that uh, seems to uh, have attacked them in their minds. But that, of course, brings up how much of the Georgia Republicans' base actually do feel attacked here. I mean, if you look at the NRA, they self-reported they have 5 million members nationwide, and we're just talking about one single state here, Georgia, with a population of just over 10 million. I think there's a conversation and debate there. I also don't believe that the NRA speaks on behalf of all gun owners. Even if that self-reported 5 million members number is real, it, it, it's such a small number of people that own guns in America. We don't 
don't have exact figures, but it's estimated that 22 to 29 percent of Americans own a gun. And if we took the 2016 population of America, 323.1 million people, and then we went with the lowest estimate that 22 percent of Americans own a gun, then you're looking at a 71 million figure. And so then if we did fast throwaway math, that just means that the NRA membership is just 7 percent ish of the total number of gun owners. And that's with us just talking about the NRA, not just Republicans in general, which I do personally have an issue with that they're they're trying to bulk all conservatives with how the NRA is being treated. But all of that said, I wanna pass the question off to you. That is the situation, that is my opinion, and now I wanna hear from you in those comments down below. What are your thoughts on these companies, the politicians, everything? And that's where I'm going to end today's show. And remember, if you liked this video, you like what I'm trying to do on this channel, hit that like button if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you don't miss these daily weekday videos, which actually, if you did miss yesterday's show, you wanna catch up, click or tap right there to watch that. Or if you need something lighter, we got a brand new behind the scenes vlog today, click or tap right there to watch that. But that's it, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco, you've just been filled in, I love yo faces, and I'll see you tomorrow.